herzlich willkommen bei WorldEye. Ich bin Julian und zusammen mit meinem Kameramann Ki sind wir gerade unterwegs in den Wäldern Islands, dessen Landschaft eher karg ist, wo es doch umso schöner ist, mal in einem Wald wie diesem hier aufzuwachen, umringt vom Vogelgezwitscher und noch ein bisschen das Frühstück zu genießen. In dieser Folge wollen wir uns ein wenig mehr damit befassen, was denn an den Wäldern Islands so besonders ist. Aber jetzt können wir auch keine Zeit mehr verlieren. Wir sind schon wieder viel zu spät dran. Jetzt noch schnell eben einpacken und dann geht's los. In diesem kleinen Waldstück treffe ich mich jetzt mit Rhein. Er ist Director des National Forest bei Skoka Team, dem National Forest Service, und kann mir jetzt auch mal genau erklären, warum der isländische Wald so besonders ist. Well, we are in the local forest of Selfos, where the people in Selfos they have a forest association, volunteer work, and they started planting trees here in 1985. Why is it uh, important to, to bring back uh, the forests uh, to Iceland? Iceland had um, lots of forests uh, 1100 years ago. Then most of the country was covered with forests. And uh, the settlers that came here, the Vikings and probably people from Ireland, they started to burn down some areas to get grazing lands and hayfields. And then we Uh, the forest disappeared on the lowland and, and gradually these 25 or 40 percent of the woodland cover went down to 1 percent around 1900. And it's it, very important to have these forests growing mainly to protect the soil because they, are, they have a lot of volcanic materials and if the forest goes away we have risk of erosion. What are the main challenges to bring back the forests to Iceland? Uh, we have several challenges. It's, uh, the land is barren. Uh, we don't have the uh, soil organisms that belong mm -hmm. to the forest in, in the soils where, the, where this hasn't been any forest for hundreds of years. Uh, yeah, one of the plants they used on eroded sites was this lupine. Mm -hmm. Actually, also imported. It's a lupine from Alaska originally. The native birds that you know has been growing in Iceland probably the last 10,000 years. That's this one, and they well they don't grow so fast and they don't get so big. But actually, they can grow up maybe to 15 meters or so. So we have to bring in plants with mycorrhiza and. And we have to give some nutrition in the beginning because uh, the soils are defect uh, or, or have little nitrogen and phosphorus, which are very important nutrients for tree growth. People are afraid that they might, you know, change the local vegetation. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's a bit too late to worry about that. Maybe you have to accept it. So they call it invasive species. <laughs> So the first years are very important for, for the trees in yeah. general. Yeah, the first winter is actually crucial. When we plant trees in the spring or in the autumn, it's very crucial that they survive the first winter. How many don't survive? If we get unlucky, we could lose half of the seedlings. But in most years, maybe 80-90% survive. When we have gone through this establishment of, of the forests, the trees actually survive quite well. They are growing as well as we see in many neighboring countries. Well, like this area, there were no trees, not at all, not one. <laughs> so this was just uh, grazing land from the local farmer and they 
probably mostly had horses in this area and few sheep, different climate, you know, you mm -hmm. can you can go here in even bad weather and have good shelter and maybe a few degrees warmer inside the forest. What, what actually uh, brought you to uh, work in a forest? Very good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, um, it's probably because my parents were interested in planting trees and they were you know, taking part in all kinds of volunteer work with the Forest Association. And, and even further back, my grandparents were interested in trees and they had big trees in the garden and so on. Actually started as yeah. a teenager planting trees, maybe 15 years old or yeah. so. Later I went to Denmark to study forestry. We didn't have any school at that time. And then I came back and, you know, with the aim of, you know, getting more forests. Mm -hmm. It's a nice job. It's a privilege to work with the Forest Service. Well, what do you think are the future challenges for, for the Icelandic forests? After these 120 years of planting trees in Iceland, mm -hmm. it has grown from 1% up to 2% <laughs> only. <laughs> so we have large areas where we can actually plant trees and both grow timber, protect soil. We are beginning to cut down trees and do some thinnings in the forests and getting timber. Mm -hmm. So the, the big challenge now is actually to build up a timber industry. It, it's not only the carbon sequestration, it's also all the other benefits. Mm -hmm. And if you can use the timber from a tree and, you know, it, either it replaces oil in some way or mm -hmm. will be used for buildings mm -hmm. so it will you know stay as a carbon for maybe 100 years more that's very important for the mm -hmm. for the earth yeah thank you very much for the, for the conversation yeah same here nice to have you thank you thank you gerade schon ein bisschen weiter unterwegs und hier ist so ein kleiner Wald, ähm, aber ein sehr gutes Beispiel, ähm, wie so ein Wald aussieht, wenn er so wahrscheinlich jetzt so schätzungsweise fünf Jahre alt ist. Überall so kleine Bäumchen, der ist nicht mehr so hoch wie ich und trotzdem wird er schon ein paar Jahre auf dem Buckel haben. Wahnsinnig interessant und es zeigt einfach, wie viel Zeit das Ganze hier in Island braucht. in Huseweg angelangt und gerade vor uns fährt schon der liebe Antoine. Mit dem können wir heute bis mitgehen und ein paar Bäume pflanzen. Er selber fängt jetzt hier ein neues Feld an. Äh, genau das wird er uns später selber erklären. Jetzt gehen wir aber erstmal die Bäume einladen und dann geht es ab zum Feld. by tree per, per tree. <laughs> All right, so this right. food load is about uh, 3,000 trees. Let's say 2,500. Mm -hmm. That's good enough for one day. Okay. Every day I plant about two, 3,000, sometimes four. Mm -hmm. So let's go. We can go to the field. <laughs> okay. I really try not to walk without planting. 
I organize myself to calcu calculate the distance and uh, always, every time I walk, I plant a tree every two meters, never waste any time. <laughs> What's your motivation to plant trees? Uh, 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 for the planet, I, I really enjoy doing uh, my share of uh, making the planet greener. Uh, I like this country, Iceland has welcomed me very well for the past uh, years of planting here. And uh, the people I work for are very happy. They want a good forest, so they, they provide me with a good place to stay, good food and we work together to make this nice forest. What, what's the hardest part here in Iceland? <laughs> yeah, maybe the weather, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you, you keep warm when you, you work hard, but uh, the beginning of this year was very difficult. The frost was everywhere, the ground was just frozen everywhere. Yeah. So we had to wait. And then uh, when I finally started, it, it snowed every day for two weeks almost. Little snow that didn't stay, but still it was very cold. <laughs> I, I do like 10 to 12 hour days, uh, uh, to 12, yeah, 20 to 12 hour days, and I, I really don't have a break for lunch when we tree plant. Yeah. It's like every two hours when, when you, you need food, so every, every two hours I eat yeah. a little sandwich and uh, that yeah. makes my day. It's, it's all about uh, making big numbers to, to yeah. be able to finish the, the contract on time. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty well paid when you are good at it. Mm -hmm. It's a very tough job. So you don't take too much breaks, you work long days, and it can be a really good season. Where do you get this, this energy from? This is exhausting. <laughs> I mean, just getting money from, from it, is it the only motivation? Uh, also uh, uh, also uh, staying in good form. I tend to, to, to gain a little weight when I'm in France, so uh, I'm here to lose it also. <laughs> Sport. <laughs> that was 120 trees. With the cold weather like that, it's good to work fast and uh, I don't get cold. <laughs> Back in 2017, they made an article about me because I uh, I broke the national record planting 6,000 trees in one day. <laughs> there were small trees like that, but uh, still, it, it took me 15 hours. <laughs> so this shovel has planted at least a million trees. The spade was that long and just hitting rocks and. Uh, Using it a lot made it so small now. I can still use it, but not for very long. <laughs> I, um, I'm supposed to put two meters between each tree, but I don't really like to make a straight forest that looks like it's planted. So sometimes I put 1.5 and then 1.9 <laughs> and 2.3. As long as the average is good, yeah. then it's, it's all right. So you take one and uh, so this line is done. We can, you can just come here. So you, you, you try to go, if possible, on the side. Okay. And the, the thing is, you, you can always use this to, to, to level, so you don't have to, to push too hard or something like that. So in the so. front, you, you, you try to go quite deep with it. Okay. Like that, yeah. yeah okay. It's, it's okay. Yeah. And then in the front, in the back, mm -hmm. and you go with your hand along the spade. So you, uh, you, you're supposed yeah. to, to keep the spade inside. Ah, okay. Yeah, like that. And then you go against like that, ah. up into the ground. And when you feel it's straight down and you try to close it, you can hold the trees okay. while, you, while you close it to make sure it's, it's straight. That's a good looking tree. All right. Uh, it's on the side. It's holding well. Yeah. It's straight. It's ah. a good looking tree. Nice. One thing is quite important also is uh, we try to have a shelter from the north wind. So north is over there. If I can hide behind a little bump to have a shelter from the north wind, it's very good for, to save the tree on the first winter. It's even schon cool, irgendwie einfach Bäume zu pflanzen in Island. Dem Land noch ein bisschen was zu geben. Maybe. Thanks. That's too deep. That's okay as long as you cover the plug, yeah. No, you can put uh, one last one here. Okay. And one then you, you change to another line. Here. Very good. Try to keep it. Uh, no, that's, that's yeah. not, not, that's not deep enough. Yeah. Because <laughs> just because you, you didn't keep the, the shovel in. in, it has to be in and you go with your hand into the ground. Ah, really. Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it takes a rip, repetition, mm -hmm. making, planting uh, every day 3,000 trees after you get good at it. I had this opportunity to come work in Iceland back uh, 13 years ago and I uh, found this job and I really enjoy it. I, uh, I've done it in Canada and Scotland also. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I know they plant in Australia, maybe one day I'll go. Uh, I use this to travel around the world. Did you still count all of them? Uh, you're talking about so many numbers, like <laughs> one million trees with a, a spade. Yeah, yeah, I gather the empty boxes uh, every night and count them and keep track of that. But we, we have a, a, a plan, so I, I know the full amount of, of trees. So when I start the contract, I just check if uh, it's exact same numbers as they told us. There are people coming to check my trees also. So um, what, what they do is they, they, they put the shovel like that. They take a three meter rope and they turn and see how many trees are in this circle. So that way you know the density. And also each trees that are in the circle, they will come next to it and check if it's straight up, if it's not too deep or not too shallow, to, to count how many trees are in one checked area. And then they tell you, okay, this is good, this is not good, you have to be careful, you have to change. And if you have too many bad trees, they just send you back and you have to take them out, all of them, and restart everything. So you're not getting paid, you can waste many days like that. mit Antoine mitzugehen war schon mega cool und jetzt können wir sogar beide behaupten, wir haben unsere eigenen Bäume in Island gepflanzt. Ey, wie cool ist das denn? Dieses Feld hier beweist einfach mal, was es für eine enorme Aufgabe ist, wieder Bäume in Island zu pflanzen und dann doch äh, so enthusiastische äh, Leute wie Antoine zu treffen. Ähm, einfach nur der absolute Hammer. Bei diesem Wetter, Wind, Regen, heute ist es kalt bei 2 Grad, ähm, dann noch Energie zu haben. Echt, Chapeau, Hut ab, ich könnte es nicht machen. Naja, jetzt mal Abfahrt und weiter. Speziell, dass so ein Wald einem so kann faszinieren kann oder so viel Bedeutung hat. Der Gedanke lässt mich irgendwie so nicht los, dass man als Mitteleuropäer, wo Wälder so normal sind, sich selbst davon faszinieren lässt und auf einmal merkt, wie wichtig uns doch auch Wälder sind und wie selbstverständlich sie aber auch eigentlich da sind. Mhm. Dann kommt man nach Island und sieht da irgendwie einen Baum und schau mal einen Baum. <lacht> weil man irgendwie damit nicht rechnet, aber eigentlich gehören Wälder nach Island. Das ist eigentlich unser Leben nachher. Die kurze Zeit eigentlich sehr unwichtig fast. Das fasziniert mich eigentlich, wie die Wälder so lang brauchen, zum groß zu werden. Und selbst dann sind sie eigentlich noch nicht riesig. Und trotzdem ist alles so ein bisschen gedrungen und klein. Ich meine, die Bäume, die hier sind, sind ja schon quasi ausgewachsen. Mhm. Denke. Das finde ich ein faszinierend. Mhm. Wie ewig das es geht und bei uns stehen sie so als selbstverständlich gross da. Mir ist es so gegangen, dass wenn ich in der Schweiz auf einem Berg oben bin, dann äh, komme ich mir immer klein vor. Und, ja, also, dass das halt mein Leben nicht so lang ist, aber nicht in einem negativen Sinn. Und in Island habe ich das sogar im Wald. Ich habe wirklich so das Gefühl, dass eigentlich ist mein Leben so kurz und unbedeutend für die ganze Welt. In Eisen habe ich zum Beispiel das Gefühl, es ist nicht nur wichtig, einfach einen Baum zu pflanzen, sondern einfach wirklich die äh, ganze Natur damit zu unterstützen. Irgendwie habe ich dann nochmal einen größeren Mehrwert gesehen, als einfach nur einen Baum zu pflanzen. Wie es zuerst? Weil ich es gesehen habe. Das Gleiche gewesen, wenn du nach Afrika gegangen wärst, wo der Af Urwald abgeholzt wird. <lacht> Wahrscheinlich. Und gesehen hättest, dass dort aufgepflanzt wird. Aber Wahrscheinlich. Ja, das stimmt, das ist ein cooler Aspekt. Aber wie sieht es? Schön da. 
Ja, wenn, wenn er bald mal da ist, nach 30, 40 Jahren. <lacht> ähm, das ist schon cool. Aber gerade auf die Knieße. Jetzt kommt so die Sonne raus. Manchmal sieht man den Wald vor lauter Bäumen nicht. Und hier in Island sucht man selbst den einen Baum. Wenn ihr das nächste Mal im Wald seid, nehmt euch doch mal die Zeit, den Wald zu genießen. Wälder sind für uns viel zu selbstverständlich geworden. Und Island hat mir gezeigt, wie viel Zeit und Arbeit es braucht, solch ein System wieder aufzubauen. Bäume zu pflanzen hilft nicht nur der CO2-Bilanz, sondern auch dem Land, der Bevölkerung und dem Ökosystem. Ich hoffe, ich konnte euch das Thema ein wenig näher bringen und genieße jetzt noch ein wenig die Sonne und das Grüne. Das war's für diese Folge. Nächstes Mal treffen wir uns unter anderem mit einer Geologin und schauen uns einen aktiven Vulkan an. Bis dahin eine gute Zeit und auf Wiedersehen.